and welcome to this review of my Cherry KFN3 keyboard. Or maybe it's called a Cherry 414 as I found an identical looking keyboard in this Italian magazine ad. Well, whatever. I got this keyboard off of eBay over a year and a half ago for £10, which is a pretty nice deal. It's missing one key, the old key unfortunately, but it's in otherwise outstanding condition. The seller mentioned he was a cherry salesman and that he used it as a demo model, hence why it's seen virtually no use. I've been wanting to show you this one for a while now because it's a very interesting critter. Many things about this keyboard are completely different from even their really early MX boards, and that is because this hails from an era in which Cherry MX had not come out yet, despite the MX switch design being 35 years old as of making this video. I have no idea how old this particular unit is unfortunately. All I found was the model number of the assembly, which is BFN38302, which means the keyboard unit itself should be KFN38302, based on other KFN3 examples. The switch is a cherry solid state capacitive, as they call it, in particular the low profile version with this very curious shamrock keycap mount. As you can see, it uses an external coil spring, and this hints towards what the switch is actually based on. Yup, as you can see, it's actually a foam and foil board, so I guess a more descriptive name would be Cherry Foam and Foil. Solid state capacitive doesn't even make sense, because the switches use moving parts, so of course it's not actually a solid state keyboard. But that said, the name is a lot cooler than Cherry Foam and Foil, and they must have thought so as well, because in a contemporary diagram of the switch, they tactically refer to the foam and foil parts as an over-travel pad and movable plate with dielectric. Most people don't even know Cherry made foam and foil switches, and in all fairness, they're quite different from most other foam and foil designs I've seen so far. Apart from the unique shamrock mount, the shape of the capacitive pads is also very curious. And most important, while other foam and foil switches I've seen so far tend to suck gargantuan gorilla ghoulies, these ones are actually really nice. Instead of being scratchy, stiff and mushy like most are, these are smooth, light and feel surprisingly firm, not spongy in the least. They show almost no binding either. Very nice, I think I'd like using these in a daily driver too. Also, the sound is excellent. It has a nice, clean quality to it, in my opinion, let alone the fact that they sound very deep and bassy. In fact, I think it sounds extremely similar to popcorn popping inside a paper bag. Listen to this. They made it onto my top X best sounding keyboard switches video as a matter of fact, and I showed a TDXL video of them not too long ago, and of course, being foam and foil, they have inherent end key rollover. Not bad. I've read an article where it is claimed that these have a lifetime of 300 million keystrokes, the highest figure I've seen so far for foam and foil switches, which are normally 100 million. I have to say though, I think that's just a case of measuring for a longer period of time. Modern switch manufacturers, for example the ones that produce optical and hall effect switches, do the same, as measuring even just 100 million key presses takes almost a year, so they just cut off the measurement there. A Cherry catalogue entry from 1979 that lists these switches shows some really funky features as well. They mentioned that it has a low, low profile with just 0.360 inches, that's 9mm in units that are actually relevant in the post 19th century world, of plate spacing, which sounds like a lot, but remember that this is before they brought out Cherry MX, which was considered a low profile switch at the time as well. Moreover, it has only one power supply requirement, 5 volts, which again sounds bizarre as that's been standard for decades now. There is a selection of either N key rollover or a lockout function, and an optional repeat function on all keys at up to 900 Hz. <laughs> How times have changed since then. Really cool bit of historical keyboard inside this. The keyboard predates Cherry's usual shit build quality and comes with a metal back panel, metal mounting plate, and a fairly thick plastic case. It doesn't flex at all and comes in at just under 1.4 kilos. I'll admit it's lighter than I had thought based on the materials it uses, being only half the weight of the almost identically sized XT Model F, but it still feels like a very well made keyboard. The caps are just lovely, they're medium thick double shots and they're so white, look at it! However, these shamrock switches have a different mount than MX switches, so they're not compatible with modern keyboards unfortunately. 
they use a different font from their later keyboards as well. I like it, it just screams vintage in my opinion. That said, the thinner legends are a bit inconsistent, as you can see the thickness is somewhat uneven. That's not uncommon for thin legend double shots, but it's especially noticeable on these. Still, regardless, these are very nice caps, no question about it. Weirdly enough, although the caps lock and num lock keys have little LEDs beside them as status indicators, the scroll lock doesn't have one. Don't know what the poor scroll lock ever did to deserve that. Also, although they dissolve in acetone, I'm not 100% sure they are actually ABS. I mean, they probably are, but they just feel different to me, softer or something. I'm probably just imagining things, but it doesn't feel like any ABS I've ever felt. Maybe it's a different composition or something, or just a different texture. The layout may be unfamiliar to some of my newer viewers, it's what's known as the XT layout, after the XT era Model F keyboard that I showed earlier. It's rather antiquated, but with some practice, it's really not that bad. Interestingly, it uses a terminal jack type connector that goes into the bottom of the keyboard here. This is strange because the other KFN3s that I've seen use the fixed cable coming from the back. It also looks like a cable coming out here would get in the way when you put the keyboard down, and the whole cutout into the plate looks somewhat improvised to me, so maybe it has something to do with it being a salesman model. Mine also has no stickers at the back or even any traces of them, which is why I thought this was called a BFN3 for a long time, and the flip out foot, which is a long wire really, isn't present, and in fact there are no traces of it ever having been there, again this may well be because it was a demo model. Normally a very long wire runs along the back here, which can be flipped down and used as a foot, I have no idea where it is or if it ever came with one, if it did come out it seems it wasn't the most robust design. Anyway, I like this keyboard, I think it would be quite usable as a daily driver. It also shows a cool side of Cherry's history before MX switches, and again, personally, I like these a lot better. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.